Let's change gears slightly. The case against the man accused of orchestrating the murder of Sekhofate Pule is nearing completion. Closing arguments are expected to be heard in the Johannesburg High Court. Ndutuku Shoba is accused of being the mastermind behind his girlfriend's death. Sekhofate Pule was eight months pregnant when she was found dead in June 2020. She had gunshot wounds and was found hanging from a tree in Rudaput. ENTA's Linda Lomasekane is covering that story for us. Let's cross to her live now for an update. Slee, good morning. Uh, good to connect with you again. Uh, let's look back to last week. Ntutu Koshoba uh, was the witness that had everyone's attention. Uh, what's the impression that he left, do you think, on the court and on those watching in the gallery? You know, I think uh, everyone was anticipating his testimony, especially after the judge dismissed his application for a discharge, uh, basically asking the court to acquit him of the charges, saying that uh, the states did not have enough evidence against him. However, uh, judge, uh, acting Judge Stuart Wilson felt differently, saying that, um, you know, the state may... Uh, be able to get a conviction in this particular matter. And what we heard from Shoba in terms of the state cross-examining him after, the, after his lawyers brought him to the stand was really uh, questions around the type of relationship he had with Tsukhufa Tupule, as well as the events that transpired on the 4th of June uh, where she met her untimely death. And uh, the impression, I think, for many those, of those in the gallery, especially for Tsukhufa Tupule's family, um, was really shock uh, in terms of the answers he gave around why he would allow his eight-month pregnant girlfriend uh, to leave with Muzigai um, Samalipane, uh, who was um, purporting himself to be an Uber driver. Uh, details around the, the disputed number, which uh, Shoba says doesn't belong to him, but was in constant communication uh, with the convicted killer, Muzigai uh, Samalipane, as well as the state going into um, a lot of the technicalities around how how uh, the number Shoba uh, claims is his, his registered number, um, and its connection to Pule as well as the disputed number, how there always seems to be um, a constant communication around those numbers, especially around uh, the events that, which, uh, that, 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 that preceded her, um, uh, her, her, her death on the 4th of June, as well as the fact that uh, Shoba's uh, registered number and the disputed number, which uh, the state claims he used to communicate with Mandabare, always seemed to be um, at the same locations. So uh, the state um, really grilling Shoba around those coincidences, um, they say. And today, I think uh, we'll be definitely hearing more detail around how the evidence they've pre presented before the court ties in and why they believe that, uh, that uh, Shoba is, uh, that Shoba does really have a, a case to answer to here. So like you say, today they're, they're, they're going to tie it all up in a neat bow and, uh, and present their cases. Before we get to that, uh, very quickly, some of the other standout witnesses throughout this trial for you. Hmm. Certainly, of course, we were all looking, um, looking towards uh, Shoba's lawyers bringing him to the stand to really account for what he knows around what happened uh, to Tsukhufa Topule. But I think uh, what, was, what really stood out in this particular matter was the cell phone records, um, as well as the evidence by the convicted uh, killer, Muzikai Malebane, around how Shoba had approached him, how they had agreed on an amount of 70,000 rand uh, for the death of Tsekhu Fatopule, how um, her murder was supposed to look like a suicide, um, as, as well as testimony around um, the, the, the cell phone records and, uh, and where the, the numbers um, are being picked up especially proceeding to the days uh, leading up to the death of Tsekho Fatsopule. Uh, I think many of, uh, uh, many of the witnesses that the state brought in were very technical um, to try and show the court that uh, there, is, there is evidence that links uh, Shoba to this particular crime. But of course we did hear uh, from uh, some of uh, Tsekho Fatsopule's friends and family around the type of relationship that Shoba had with, uh, with Pule. Um, you know, Shoba Claims that uh, you know they were kind of casual, uh, but you know we heard evidence that their relationship began ar around 2018. We heard that uh, this abortion, um, which uh, from WhatsApp messages 
uh, was supposed to happen but didn't happen. It was not the first time that she had been pregnant by Shoba as well. Um, and of course, these details quite quite shocking um, uh, and, and emotional. Many emotional scenes in court, I must say, over the past four weeks, uh, especially when those details came uh, came out about the 4th of June um, and how she tragically lost her life. We, we heard for the first time in court that Malipane had shot her in Nord and then hung her body uh, in Rodebert in, 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 in the Durban Deep. Um, one of the last witnesses that was also quite interesting, uh, which we could not name uh, because of a court order, uh, and so we refer to her as Witness X, also spoke a lot about what she knew about the convicted killer um, and the car that was used um, in the commission of this murder. So there's been a lot of testimony over the past four weeks, and I think today it's going to be quite interesting to hear what Shoba's lawyers are going to be saying around why they don't believe the state doesn't have a case, and also just hearing from the state itself um, how they're going to tie this all, uh, all in together. But we will be bringing those visuals live as well when court proceedings begin at around 10 a.m. this morning. Slee, thank you for keeping us informed on this case. We appreciate it. Slinde Lomasikane at the Houting High Court where closing arguments expected in the Ndutuko Showa trial. Up